Do you recognize the leaves here? Obviously the lettuce plants are leaves. What about onions? Think about cutting an onion in half and you can imagine each of those circular rings as a compressed leaf. And how about that so-called little boy plant, the red one? You know the, uh, the, the what looks like a petal to a, a flower is actually a leaf? These are some of the leaves I have known. The principal function of leaves is to absorb sunlight to manufacture plant sugars through a process called photosynthesis. Leaf surfaces are flattened to present a large area for efficient light absorption. The blade is an expanded thin surface on either side of a midrib and usually the largest, most conspicuous part of the leaf. The leaf is held away from its stem by a stem-like appendage called a petiole, and the base of the petiole is attached to the stem at a node. The leaf may emerge from a bud, like an apical meristem, at the top of the plant, or lower on the stem from a side bud, called an axillary bud. The young meristematic cells in this region divide and then elongate and eventually differentiate, become specialized functional organs, forming different tissues in the leaf, like the xylem and the phloem. You'll need to know these parts of the leaf for the exam. The blade, the petiole, which connects the leaf to the stem, the midrib, which has the veins, leaf margins, and leaf Leaf margins are often used to help identify the plant. Uh, sometimes they're serrated, sometimes they're, they're roundish. Uh, and the leaf node, of course, is where the petiole is connected to the stem. The veins of a leaf, or the vascular bundles, contain xylem and phloem. They extend from the root up through the stem, through the petiole, and out into the leaf blade. There are two principal types of veins, the parallel veins on the left, and the net vein on the right. Parallel vein leads are connected laterally by minute straight veinlets. The net vein leads, net vein leaves um, branch from the main rib or the ribs and subdivide into finer and finer netlets. Generally, most parallel vein leaves are monocotyledonous plants. That is, they have one cotyledon in the seed, like corn. Net vein leaves are often dicotyledonous plants, like a maple leaf or an oak leaf. There are lots of different leaf shapes which are used to help identify plants. You don't need to know this for the, for the test. Let's take a look now at what leaves do. The most important function of leaves is to capture solar energy and turn it into chemical energy or sugar the plant can use through the process of photosynthesis. Leaves are constructed in a particular way for this purpose. Let's take a look. There are three different types of cells you're gonna find in the leaf and have different purposes. The epidermal cells here are all protective cells. The internal working cells of the plant um, here, which we'll look at a little bit more closely, um, do most of the photosynthesis. And the veins here are transport cells. These are the xylem and the phloem. Let's first look at the protective cells, the epidermal cells. Leaves have both an upper and a lower epidermis, consisting of, of a layer of about one cell thick generally. It can be thicker in some cactus plants. The epidermis is often covered by a waxy cuticle to protect, prevent water loss and is filled with little stomates. These are these, the place where the air can go in and out. Most of the stomates are on the bottom of the leaf. That's a test question. That top layer of, of epidermis clearly needs to be transparent to let the light flow through because the working part of the plant where the photosynthesis is gonna be happening is here, these palisades cells that need to get light for photosynthesis. The cuticle um, is formed on the top of the leaf is a waxy surface to prevent water loss. It also exists on the bottom of the leaf. Bottom of the leaf has lots of stomates and you can see here in this picture. Stomates are pores for gas exchange and they may occur on both leaf surfaces, but they're generally more of them on the lower leaf surface 
than the upper leaf surface because the lower leaf su surface is protected from the sun. Special epidermal cells called guard cells, here you can see two guard cells and the open pore in between. These cells respond, they open and close in response to environmental stimuli, such as weather and light. They regulate the passage of water, oxygen, carbon dioxide in and out of the leaf. When the two guard cells are deflated, the, sto the, the stomach pore closes, and when they inflate with water, the stomach opens. Some plants appear kind of fuzzy because the epidermal cells appear like hairs. They grow out a little bit from the leaf surface to prevent water loss. Next, we have the vascular system or the veins. This contains both xylem and phloem carrying water and sugar throughout the plant. The veins are vascular bundles contain both xylem and phloem. Water moves throughout the plant through this vascular system. Both root pressure and evaporation from the leaves power the water through the plant. About 90% of the water taken up by the roots will travel right through the xylem and escape through the veins within a few hours. The internal working cells of the plant are made up of both palisade cells, as you can see here, and what's called mesophyll cells found in the middle of the leaf. And they both do photosynthesis. The palisade cells are arranged in compact columnar fashion. Most of the photosynthetic activity takes place in the palisade layer because it's closer to the sun. Its cells have more chloroplast than the layer below, which is called the spongy mesophyll. Mesophyll means the middle of the leaf. And this spongy area has, has cells which do both, both gas exchange as well as photosynthesis. Here's a really nice cross section of the leaf with the upper epidermal cells and the cuticle, the waxy cuticle on top of it, preventing water loss. You've got the palisade cells, the spongy mesophyll cells. You got the veins here, the vascular bundles. You got stomates here with with a gas exchange going in and out. Remember the leaf is composed of both a blade and a petiole. Most important vegetables, uh, we, the important part of the plant that we're looking for is the blade. But in some cases, it's the petiole, as in celery. That's a test question. Lettuce is mostly made up of leaf blade and is full of water. When you buy a big head of lettuce that's shipped from Texas or California, most of what you pay for is water. The edible part of an onion is also mostly made up of leaves. Probably another test question. Onion leaves are compacted around each other in circular rings. You can see how they're you can see these rings in that once you cut an onion in half. It's the same with cabbage. Although the leaves of cabbage leaves are not wrapped quite as tight as the onion, you can see a bit of the stem here uh, in this cabbage, cabbage plant. But the head is mostly made up of leaves. The anthurium plant, or the so-called little boy plant, which is named for obvious reasons, has a leaf um, that, that looks like a petiole of a flower, but it's actually a modified leaf. If you've ever driven in the Connecticut River Valley during the summertime, you may have driven by some fields that have shade cloth over them. This is shaded tobacco, and it's used to cut down the amount of light the plant receives. This makes for a thinner leaf, and it's a thin, thin tobacco leaf can be used for a cigar wrapper. It's higher quality product. Uh, this is a tobacco field over near the Connecticut River near Mount Sugarloaf. The tobacco leaves underneath the shade cloth can get very, very large. But because they're grown in the shade, they're also very, very thin. 
Some leaves will have several layers of palisade cells, and tobacco grown in the shade is only one layer of palisade cells generally to make a very thin leaf, which is preferred for cigar wrappers. Celery, of course, will have both petiole, which is what we eat here, and some small leaves, which is the, the, part of the, the blade part of the plant, which we generally throw away. So if you're getting ready to take the exam, you probably want to know most of the parts of this leaf. You want to know about the upper epidermis, which again is transparent, clear, allows sunlight through, produces cutic the cuticle, which is a waxy covering to prevent water loss. Here we have the palisade cells, two layers of palisade cells in this plant, doing most of the photosynthesis. You have the spongy mesophyll cells here, which provides both photosynthesis and gas exchange. And you've got the xylem and the phloem, these veins, vascular bundles that are that go from the root system up through the stem right out to the leaves. And of course, stomates, most of the stomates on the lower part of the, the epidermis. Well, I think that's enough about leaves for today.